Today we're going to show you a creative way to repair the walls on a septic tank. You can actually see there's a crack. It's about, about 10 inches from the upper lip. And that's right about where the water line is. It tends to seem to happen on these tanks. From the water line up, the concrete ends up deteriorating a little bit over time. And the wall of the tank gets a lot thinner up near the top. You can actually see looking straight down on this right here, we probably lost about an inch of thickness of the original tank. On this side right here, we actually had some of the corner actually break out. And I'm going to show you exactly how to fix this. You can see in this corner how the crack actually comes down. It comes across right here. There's actually some roots coming through the side of the septic tank wall. And this is about 12 inches down from where the actual lip is. And so what we're going to do is we're going to dig out behind the back side of this wall and backfill it with concrete. And we have some real creative ideas of how you can do this without damaging the tank and disturbing the areas that are cracked. You can see with the lid off that the dirt comes right up to the surface of the edge of the lid. So let's get started and we'll get this thing excavated. First thing we did was we got our shop back. We took a piece of PVC pipe and then we taped it onto the end of the hose of the shop back. The actual hose on this shop back was a little bit smaller in diameter. Which what we'll do is we'll suck the dirt out from behind the wall and we're going to keep it really nice and thin. If we were to use a shovel and we started shoveling, we're afraid that we might actually break the side of this tank and it might fall into the tank. <laughs> I've also switched my hose to an inch and a half pipe. You can see how it fits on the end of our shop vac hose, wraps all around. I'll show you how much better this works. So our goal is to make like a two to three inch wide trench that goes down below the edge of this crack. Notoriously, septic tanks are going to attract roots. So one of the ways that we're going to deal with that is we have this tool. It's a solid piece of metal, and it has this wedge tip on it. And we actually put it on the grinder and sharpened up that tip. Metal rod has worked great for breaking up roots and gravel and just kind of loosening up the dirt, you know, in general. The second thing that we've got is we have our Sawzall, and we have a 12-inch construction demolition blade. There's a really big root right here, so we use the demolition blade to hack this one off. Okay, we're getting this thing down quite a bit deeper. It's probably down about a good 12 inches right now. You can see this crack right here where actually the roots have actually came through the crack and they've probably widened the crack up a little bit. And we've been able to get down behind these roots and break them off on the back side of the tank. We've dug this thing down about 16 inches around the perimeter. And then we've gone through and we've hammered some rebar down into the bottom of our trench. We're spacing these about a foot apart. And you can see as you go around the corner, there they all are. Okay, we've mixed our first bag of cement and we poured it down on the bottom of the, the trench and we're using a stick to kind of jab it up and down and get it all back into the all the cracks and crevices. We've also taken a piece of horizontal rebar and we've wrapped the corners just like that. And now it's time to put some more cement on top of that and pack it down. And we've got our cement all mixed up. We're just using our flat shovel to take it right out of the thing. And we'll put it you know, right down in the groove. All right, we're using our stick to make sure we get all this down really deep into all the corners, all the cracks. And up and down. We did kind of mix our cement a little bit soupy to make sure it would get down into all these crevices also. Okay, we've got all our cement in place. We've got our trowel. We'll get it all nice and flat and level, smoothed out. We'll be back in a little over 60 seconds after a short break and I'll show you how to repair the missing corner of the septic tank wall. Hey, we'll be back in a little over 60 seconds and we're going to pause real quick to see if you need any eternal repair. You might say eternal repair? What's that? 
Well, hey, consider your whole life, and all your life, have you ever told a lie before? I have, and I'm sure you have too. We all have. Also consider, have you ever stolen something, even no matter how small it was? I'm sure you have, and I have too. The whole point of where I'm going with this is those two rules, lying and stealing, those are two of the Ten Commandments in the Bible, for which define what sin is. So if you've broken even one of those rules, no matter how small it was, that means you've sinned, and we all have. The punishment for sin is going to hell or eternal separation from God. The good news is Jesus Christ came to this earth. He didn't lie. He didn't steal. He didn't do all these crazy stuff that you and I have done. He was totally without sin. He was sacrificed on the cross for my personal sin and yours. He went to the grave. Three days later, he defeated death, and now he sits beside the Father in heaven. The whole point of why he had to take that punishment on the cross was he was taking the punishment for your sin and for my sin. But it can only be accounted to you if through faith you believe in who he was, what he did, you submit to him as your Lord, and you repent. And when you do that, you can have eternal habitation with Jesus and the rest of the saints for eternity in heaven. You might be saying to yourself, hey, I'm a good person. Surely God wouldn't send me to hell for all the nice things I've done for people. But the truth of the matter is the Bible says, by grace you can save through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man or woman should boast. There is no amount of good work you can do to earn your righteousness before God. Only faith and trust in what Jesus has done for you on the cross. Hey, let's get back to our video, and I'll have a little more information on the eternal portion of this at the end of the video. We're digging back behind the wall of this thing, going down below the area that's still good with no cracks in it. And then we're actually going to build a form on the inside of this thing and back pour it with cement. I'll show you how that works. We built ourselves a wooden form that's going to keep the cement from rolling into the septic tank. We're actually probably about a good six to eight inches below you know, the crack line. We have this one piece that screws in on the top that keeps it level with the original top of the septic tank. We've got the outside walls of the septic tank kind of washed down with the hose, got them all cleaned up. And now we're starting to put rebar that's going to kind of encircle this whole thing as we make it. We're doing rebar horizontal and we're doing some short rebar stubs vertically. See here how we actually wrapped the wood all around three sides and we actually had damage right there where the pipe was coming into the tank. And so to correct that, we cut that piece of plywood that has a slot on the bottom. So it went down over the top of the, the pipe. We were able to take a couple of two by fours and kind of hammer them down into the sediment, which actually made good props to hold this wood up, you know, to be able to put the concrete on the back side of it. We were actually able to grade the cement with the top of the siding because we used our level and had everything all leveled up. And now we have a really nice, strong lip and we'll be able to go and put our lid back on here. Hey, as far as the eternal portion I was talking about, if you're not sure you know who God is, I encourage you to just to pray like this. Say, Lord Jesus, if you were real and you were out there, I pray you would reveal yourself to me in a tangible way. And when you make that prayer, he's going to answer it, and you will know he is real. At the point you know he is real, and you're ready to accept him as your Lord and Savior, the gospel is so simple. All you have to do is just pray like this. Say, Lord Jesus, I recognize that you are the Son of God, you took the price for my personal sin on the cross. I surrender my will to your will as Lord of my life. I repent of my sin. Thank you for loving me, forgiving me, and accepting me into your eternal habitation. That's just how simple it is. But the catch is that just saying those words won't do anything for you, only unless the heart believes the words that you're speaking. For the Bible says in Romans 10:9, if you confess with your mouth Jesus Christ is Lord, which I just did, and you believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Salvation only comes through faith and believing. Hey, if you get a chance, visit our website, eternalrepair.com, where we have a lot more information about your walk with Jesus Christ. That's eternalrepair.com. Thanks for watching.